So you remember uh, he got a you know caused some ruffled feathers from people that what you'd even think were generally on my side. I don't care. It is what it is. Um, we're gonna do what we're gonna do from a business standpoint, as well as a fandom surrounded or a, a fandom that's based upon our business when our comic books start coming out. But this is exactly what I was talking about when I say protect the sanctity of your shit by bad actors and infiltrators. See, infiltrators, particularly from the left, and this is why they win. A lot of people don't understand their tactics, so I got to explain it to you. They, it's not just a mere, okay, they don't like us. That's part of it. But they're strategic. And what they do is people that really aren't interested in this brand or any brand, for that matter, will then pretend like they are part of it for the sake of ensuring that you change your content. And that's how they won, because they infiltrated. They said, hey, look at us. We're fans. And this is the type of work that we want. You're not having enough diversity, enough, enough representation, or this is offensive and all that stuff. When you really, you, you know deep down these types, and most of the time these guys are, are, exist only and solely on the Internet. But these types aren't really true fans. They're not true customers of this. It's more of they want that recognizable brand to be a reflection of their individual social or political views. That's all. And here's an instance here of exactly that. Every now and then you get some weirdo who, I don't know, gets on Twitter. And I, this guy, hilariously enough, commented on my YouTube first. And I then I think, I don't know if he's been on Twitter for a while, but I almost feel like he created the fucking Twitter exactly for me. <laughs> and to respond with the same exact comment that he responded on my Twitter uh, or that or my YouTube originally. But this is exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to protecting your fandoms and what I would uh, want my uh, uh, customers to do, because each thing comes with this community. And I want us to have a healthy, thriving community. We'll have you as a customer, uh, no matter who it is that you are. But we don't want bad actors poisoning the well and this is an example of exactly this so this guy basically was upset at a video the previous not not at well yeah it was a video where we talked about or i just mentioned miles morale i don't even think the video that he responded to had anything to do with miles morales he just was upset that miles morales got mentioned as a tokenized character and when i was doing a video and that he took issue with that and apparently uh, okay i only talk about tokenism uh, and black characters and i was like yeah dude have you missed my mouth and it's funny because it was yesterday and that yesterday being the seventh i don't know when you guys are going to view this video but on the seventh we released the segment of us talking about the gay superman which is a white character yet there's tokenism you know i've taught i've explained this i have a long form video breaking it down with moving images and pictures that's aesthetically pleasing and these idiot motherfuckers still don't know what we're talking about when we talk about tokenism and these uh which you know explains these sort of swaps of these classical characters by way of gender uh sexuality or race you know what i mean so of course there are characters that are still white that are tokenized characters and we've announced this before so he said here I'm not saying you have to make every video about calling out all forms of tokenism, but if you're going to make 500 about Miles Morales or other black characters, at least make a point to call out those who are white. Okay. Anybody that knows me knows that I have talked about characters that are white that are also tokenized. Anybody that has watched me knows my most prominent videos are centered around this. We're going to get into that in a minute. And I told him, I was like, Hey man, those videos exist. And he says right here, this is a fraud. We know, I know he's a fraud, but these are the type of people that I advocate gatekeeping out of fandoms. He says, please tag me in those videos because I've never seen them. I've been a subscriber for almost three years and I have never seen you put out any videos uh, of you calling out white tokenism. Hilariously enough, he's using this uh, video of Zeke, which is a personal friend of mine. <laughs> Um, you guys may see him know, know him and Bilou for their, their reaction videos, but Zeke is like an old, a old homie of mine. And I halfway tagged him like, how the fuck you gonna, you know, whatever. But either way, that, that's neither here nor there. Nonetheless, I talked about, okay, hey, this is here today. 
So also here, this is where we know that he's a fraud. He says, Carol Danvers, Captain Marvels, you're right. I didn't see that one. Okay, guys. Anybody that is mildly familiar with my material and has been a subscriber for three years knows that Carol Danvers, I have talked about probably in her tokenism and, and like her being the tokenized version of, of Marvel knows that I have talked about this extensively. Some of my biggest videos are some of me talking about Carol Danvers, not Brie Larson, specifically Carol Danvers. And somehow he missed all of those. You know why? Because he's not a supporter or subscriber. He's not. He's a guy that wants my material to change because he's butthurt at the fact that I talk about a character that maybe he's fond of in Miles Morales. See, this is the, how these types operate. They say, hey, I am uh, a fan and um, look at me. And, and, and however, you should change your material to suit what it is that I want. These are ex this is who we talk about when we talk about bad actors. We're not talking about actual customers. We're talking about people that want to make a brand or something that they claim to be supportive of to change, to uh, be something more like, even if it was never that, they'll pretend that it's been that way, but they want it to be more like something that accommodates they per their personal social beliefs. Those are the folks that when we talk about the Ripperverse and our business, those that are fa that it's a, it's going to be a com it's comic book stuff. So it's going to be a community of people. I um, mean, it'll have its own you, you, uh, co community of people. These are the poses that I'm specifically referring to that should be gatekeep gate kept out of the fandom because they're frauds. They're not customers. They only exist to poison the wheel and make some shit about their personal social views when that's not even what it is that I had been doing. And that's not what it is that we're doing here. I'm going to start doing video when I when I see this, but definitely because so many folks, I don't want to say so many, there's just a handful who act like I'm so out of pocket for wanting the sanctity of our fandom to be protected as this stuff starts to come out. And I want that mindset to be adopted from the get go. Oh, well, he's get, get keep bad, get keep bad. We shouldn't do that. We don't want to be like the left, do we? All that other stupid shit. When we're not talking about customers, we're not talking about actual supporters. We're not talking about mere disagreements on a storyline or a care. No, we're talking about someone that is a proven and utter fraud, not a supporter, only a guy that said he was. But he wants that material to change to accommodate him, which is a very maybe loud, but ultimately not really representative of the fandom at large, the customer base at large. I am an advocate. I'm not going to um, uh, stop being an advocate for gatekeeping those bad actors the fuck out of the fandoms um, that that stem from our comic book company. That's a prime example of exactly that. You just listened to a clip from my podcast for Cannon's sake, which is live throughout the week at 12 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash Young Ripper 59 and Odyssey.com slash at Young Ripper 59. Be sure to check out my website, EricDJuly.com, so you can stay up to date with everything it is that I'm doing. You can also become a member and get access to a bunch of cool perks and exclusive content, which includes a social media hub where you can interact with myself and other members. It even has an app that you can get, which is now live in the Google and Apple stores.